So are you looking for a change? Watch Native Voice TV, now streaming live Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on San Jose's Create TV Channel 15. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, this evening we're going to meet Marvin Marine. Welcome. No. And Marvin's a singer, dancer, you, and you're California tribe. California. Tell us about your background. Uh, I'm uh, Marvin Marine. I'm Maidu and Aloni. And I turned 63 come this Sunday. Young person. And I've been dancing and singing all my life. In fact, I learned how to walk when I was a little kid by dancing, watching oh, people dance. And back in the days, and traditionally, you know, you're not allowed to dance until you're 14, 13 years old, because by then, that's when you know you're a hunter, a uh, arrow maker, a uh, uh, hunter, dancer, singer. Mm -hmm. But I used to imitate all the old men dancing, and so they told me, don't waste your talent out there. Get in here, boy. <laughs> and so I was in the house with uh, the old people, and being so young and learning from the old people, uh, we have no old people no more to go to, and a lot of the people, the younger dancers, they sort of kind of shy away from listening to what I have to say because of being so young. And of course, like I said, there's no old people anymore. And, and with us Indian people, it's like, it's, it's always we, because it wasn't for our forefathers and our, our relatives and our ancestors teaching us and to carry on tradition and the culture then we wouldn't have what mm -hmm. we have today. So it's never I, because I is the one that thinks they're on this pedestal, mm -hmm. and we come along and knock them off, and then they get mad. So it's <laughs> like, you know, it's always we. And now, your people are from the Sacramento area? Well, I was born and raised in Sacramento. Okay. But my people come from north of the American River, east of Sacramento, up to Mount Lassen, over mm -hmm. to Nevada border. Oh, okay. And it's uh, one of the largest areas for uh, tribal people, the Maidu people. Mm -hmm. And my grandpa was uh, Konkau Maidu, my grandmother was Mountain Maidu. And she was born uh, at Lake Almanor, uh, and it was called Big Meadows back then, when she was born. And then, uh, uh, then my mom and, uh, and all moved to Sacramento, and there was five girls and one uncle, and he passed that childbirth. But my uh, aunt, I think she was the oldest one, she started mm -hmm. an Indian newspaper back in 1941 called The Smoke Signal. And so as I grew up, I learned how to chicken peck on the typewriter. I learned how to cut stencils, learned how to lick stamps and envelopes and So you helped out paper. with the newspaper? Oh yeah. <laughs> and Do you speak your language? Pardon? Do you speak your language? Uh, no. I When I was growing up, I was raised by great aunts and uncles and and friends. And at one time I spoke seven different languages. And then when I started school, I was forced to take an English class in the morning and in the afternoon, and so my tongue was, the language was oh, taken away. Understand. It's like in the boarding school. Mm -hmm. The 10 years that my mom and everybody went to boarding school, you were forbidden to talk your tongue, so you got punished for it. So, right. So in turn, 
and this is back in the 50s and 60s. So, you know, when I went to school, I was taught how to speak English. Mm -hmm. And so I learned how to speak English. And then with the dancing and all, and then I uh, graduated. I was the first one out of 20 kids, grandchildren, well, there's 23 grandchildren, but the first one out of 20 wow. to graduate. Really? Yeah, and then I got a job doing archeology span and I tried to figure out what kind of disease it was. And as it turned out, it was 40 years, 45 plus years later, I'm still doing archeology. span But being that I'm a dancer, you know, People look up to me as a dancer, traditionally, mm -hmm. okay. Then I went to, uh, got drafted in the service, went to Vietnam, come back, and uh, spent two years in Vietnam. And then I came back and then uh, went back to dancing. And I used mm -hmm. to do powwow dancing plus the traditional California dancing also. And I've danced with uh, pretty much every California group. Have you? Mm hmm Yeah. Now I, you teach just, a lot of groups as well, don't I you? I teach, uh, yeah, groups. If they need to uh, get the kids interested in dancing and used to performing in front of people mm -hmm. or even their own families, it's hard because Indian kids are shy. So it's like, uh, it's amazing. I mean, I was shy and quiet. Mm -hmm. And when I was 16, I met John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy then, in Yosemite National Park. Really? Right. And I was talking to him. I shook his hand and he says, uh, you don't talk much. So I go, <laughs> he goes, I was like that. <laughs> Why and were he you goes, there? Why and then there? he says, uh, you should talk. Look at me. I'm the president now of the United States. I said, okay. <laughs> and that was the conversation with John F. Kennedy. <laughs> wow, at least you can and remember so, it all. <laughs> right. But now, then, why were you there? I was there with my uh, friend. He was worked for the Bureau of Reclamation, and he was a photographer. He worked oh, for the press. Uh -huh. So I was with him, and so I had press pass on. And, oh, and that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and it was, it, it was because, uh, you know, I've danced all my life and I've danced for you know you, you hear it about Jim Turk talking about meeting kings dukes and queens and what do you do mm -hmm. well I sort of kind of like laugh because I've danced for kings and queens <laughs> and dukes and governors I've met what 10 12 governors of California really oh, yeah wow and so it's like Meeting people is nothing now. Well, it's an honor for them you know. to meet you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and I, uh, one time I was called by uh, HBO to help with the language on Ishi and Two Worlds mm -hmm. when they did mm -hmm. that document, or not the documentary, but the one with uh, John Boyd uh -huh, and movie. Graham Greene. Yes. Right. Well, I tried out for a part for that, but. I wasn't Indian enough, I don't think. <laughs> but that's okay. John White was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he got the award. It was about the Indian, he gets the award. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> so but now you teach kids how I to teach kids, sing yeah. And the dance the and song and dance. And, uh, and a lot of the kids, like I say, are shy. And teaching kids songs seems to be the hardest part because a lot of the songs have a lot of words to them, but they not really that hard. It's mm -hmm. like, I can make up a song and like, that's made up, that's, that's a makeup song. And then you got a, the real song, like uh, this one, uh, uh, Yo ho he yo ho ha ha he 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 yo ho ha he 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 yo ho he he yo ha he 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 yo ha he 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 yo ha 
That's Tell me what you're using. This is a, a, an elderberry clapper stick. We call them banjos, fiddles, katate, uh, in Miwok it's katate stick. And it's made out of elderberry. The ends uh, uh, bored out and all. You pick it in the, f in the uh, spring when it's green and you lay it out for a year. Oh, and, really? And with that year, you have to feed it. You feed it water and breadcrumbs or meat, uh, acorn, uh, berries and all. And then after the year, it's dried out. Then you cut the section you want and then you split it. And then you can put a window in it that goes in here and the window draws a sound, a hollow sound more out of it. Now I'm still working on this one, but yeah. And then- So uh, it will the sound change as you're working on it then? Yes, they do. Yeah, because this one here like, and then the hollow sound comes out of the end of the stick. But then if you had a window in it, it really sound real hollowy or real louder, a uh -huh, lot louder. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And we use, <laughs> I was given a, a music shop class at UC Davis uh -huh. and I had my uh, bamboo sticks, uh, clapper sticks. Uh -huh. And I was standing in the class and I said, oh yeah, this is our uh, Japanese elderberry. And a lot of Asian people were in the class and I thought after I said it, hey dummy, you know, <laughs> you're not supposed to say that. And I said, excuse me. But I didn't mean that for a derogatory remark, okay? And everybody, yeah, that's cool. Now, that's good. I said, but this is bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually use elderberry. And I had an elderberry stick. I brought it out and showed them. So it was like, yeah. Uh, I felt bad after that. <laughs> so, but, now, yeah. you danced, no, you, you sang at the um, American Indian Heritage Celebration at Evergreen. Right. I was... I was one of the coordinators for the right. California Gallery. I think that's Park. how I met you. Yeah, and uh, I got tied up with uh, with our dance season. Our group danced at 63 different functions during May to September, and wow. so there was a lot of times that we, I couldn't make the meetings. But the times I did make them was in between, and. Uh, when we go and dance, our dance season and dances usually last from Thursday night until Sunday. And that's four days and three nights, or three nights or four days, or what have you, or whatever you're dancing for. And then plus, another thing about us is that when you go and dance, you fast for a week prior to dancing. Mm -hmm. So with me being diabetic, it's hard, but I still do it. And uh, that's another thing of trying to teach younger dancers that this is traditionally way and all. And mm -hmm. they seem to not want to accept it and, and so be it. Sacrifice. We just, you know, it's like, okay, that's fine. But mm -hmm. when I was growing up and being taught by the elders, my teachers and all, they worked in the fields, so they had to go get my teachers, bring them home, dry them out, and then they would, we'd, they'd fast and stuff like that, and then we'd dance, and they'd teach me what kind of dances mm -hmm. and stuff like that that they could remember. And so I thought that was the way of life, and mm -hmm. it was wrong. But, you know, you try and teach that now, the correct thing, and uh -huh. a lot of people, well, you know, you did it. I said, yeah, but I didn't do it right. So, mm -hmm. you know, you need to do this the correct way. And right. if you want to do it the correct way, this is what you need to practice. And it's hard to get them to go, do, you know, or even get into that system and in their mind that, you know, if you're going to dance, then you do it spiritually and, and through the spirit world because uh, that, that, that helps everybody because all our songs and dances are prayers. 
you know. Mm -hmm. and now your dancing is very different from the the powwow dancing that a lot Lakota dancing that a lot of people see the California dancing. Right, our our dances. Uh, we most of the time when we dance, we uh, dance in roundhouse. Like I said, it's four days, mm -hmm. three nights, and it's continuous all through the whole day, through the night, and uh, you're, you're, you, you, you fast, and then after your first dance, then you can eat, and you can eat meat, salt, and all that, mm -hmm. with, after that, after your first set. And our dances consist of four songs done four times, and that's a set. We call it a set. And you have various dance groups, like up uh, in the Pomo Land mm -hmm. and Wintoon and, and all. They have big heads, and they do big head dancing. And then they have uh, 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 other dances that uh, they call them. With us, we have a social dance. Now, th let me ask you, the so, women and the men dance separately? Uh, at one time, uh -huh. that's how traditionally the women had their house dance in and the men danced in their house. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, they started to, because they were going out in public, you know, back in the old days, the men danced in their house with just feathers, nothing else, and the women danced in their house. And then when they started going out in public to dance, then they had to start covering up. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like uh, up north, the crook people, the women never wore anything because that's why they wore all the dentalian shell beads mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all, because they didn't have no tops on and all. But when they went out in public, then they had to start covering up because the, uh, 